Hello everyone, I am back. This time with another demo, alien planets or alien world or whatever you want to call that. So I made this demo as I improving the entrance system and this was my testing ground. I put the download link for the executable file for Windows and Linux in the video description so you also can test this. I could say the performance is good. I even tested this on a Steam Deck and I had between 90 FPS up to 120 FPS on a Steam Deck machine. But this is true up to the point when you keep the global illumination disabled. If you activate that, it will eat 30 up to 40% of your FPS. Later in this video, we will talk about the global illumination system in Godot. You know, we need to talk about that. This demo is 8 km by 8 km. I mean, even this map can work as a normal open world game. The train in this demo compared the train to the last demo has much more detail and the mountain looks much better because here we use triplanar mapping for mountains. Also, we have some fog system, which is a 2D plane with some shader on it. For distributing this fog, I used grass system in M-Train plugin. I mean, now you can paint fog with grass system. Also, now if you change the LOD setting for the grass, you can see the randomization effect immediately like this. And this time I only paint the big rock stuff and I distribute the fog and the grass by code. You can see here, I have a loop, which this loop go through all of the grass cells and check if the terrain normal is mostly flat there, it will add a grass. I also added a random value to that. So in some cells we can have grass and in some cells we don't have the grass based on the random value. But one thing to note here is that you should save your grass as a separate data with .res extension, otherwise it cannot save your grass. One other thing is that we have a much better collision system for grass, so you can see these rocks, all they have collision with the collision system of the grass, and here some of the rocks are big and some of them are small. Basically collision shape here is not a scale with the grass, instead the parameter for the collision shape will change. Godot is terrible with the collision shape scaling. So this is how it's work. First is determine how much the mesh is scaled in each direction. We have three direction in 3D space, X, Y, and Z. After that, if the collision shape is a sphere, it will change its radius based on the maximum scale in X, Y, or Z direction. So a sphere collision shape work best with mostly uniform scaling. If the collision shape is cylinder or capsule, it will change the height of them according to the scale in Y direction, which is the up vector in Godot, and it will change their radius based on the maximum scale in X or Z direction. And in case the collision shape is a box shape, the size of the box shape in each direction will change based on the scale in each direction. So the box shape will have the most accurate collision shape in case of non-uniform scaling. And if you use concap or convex collision shape, you can scale them as you wish, and there is no problem with that because they are a bunch of points. But I don't recommend to using them as their performance is not good as the simple collision shapes, especially if they have a lot of points. If you create, for example, a convex shape, try to create a simplified convex collision. This one create less point and it has a better performance. And one thing to note is that if you want that the grass resize the collision shape automatically, you should check the collision shape is resizing on the grass panel. Another thing that I noticed which has some bugs is cylinder shape, especially if the player touch top or bottom section of the cylinder. In this demo, I use cylinder shape for these big rocks, but I increase their height so player won't touch the bottom part or the top part. And one other thing which I want to mention about this demo is this planet. This planet also is created 100% in Godot with some noise texture and shader code. Then I put this planet into a sub viewport and I set the render to only once. So this will create your image once and then you are good to go. Then in a sky shader, I added the planet texture and now you can see a planet in the sky. So you might ask what other new things is added to m plugin. Well, a lot of code has been rewritten and a lot of improvement has been done. I cannot say it is bug free for now, but it is much better and most of the bug exists in Godot editor. When you run your game or when you export your project, this will work and that is the important thing. So first of all, we have a undo system for sculpting, for painting, and even for painting grass. 
but there is no redo for some technical reason so when you press ctrl z make sure about what you are doing other than this a lot of hotkey is added to speed developing time for example if you hold shift key it will automatically change to the smooth brush and holding ctrl will change to the flatten brush or to height brush during painting the grass holding the shift key will remove the grass instead of adding them also a mask system has been added to the train system which i created a video about that and I will put the link of that video in the video description. So another big thing here is that we don't have a shader material for train anymore. We have a train material instead. This thing is something else which manage all of the material in each region of our train. If I open the train material and if I check show region, you can see each region of our train. Train material, like a normal shader material, receive a shader code and also it will let you to change each uniform. But it can do even something more, which can be a huge help to make bions in your train. So by default, the current active region is minus one. Minus one means the default shader parameter for all of the regions. But you can override each uniform in each region you want. So first you should choose in which region you want to override your uniform. And if you select the train and hover on top of the region which you want to change your uniform there, you can see the region ID, which is written in front of our character. Each region has a unique ID. Now come here and change the active region to that region and just change whatever parameter you want in that region. But one thing to note here is this. You cannot change a parameter which affects the train look in edges. But if you have a parameter which is all inside that region and does not contain anything in edges, you can change that. You can also clear your overrided parameter by clicking on clear. I worked and tested a lot this system and I also tried global illumination of Godot on my train. One thing to note here, I did not satisfy with the SDGFI system in Godot for this vast train. You know, it will eat up up to 30 or 40% of your FPS and it does not change your scene graphic quality too much, at least for this vast train. I mean, we as a developer, we should manage the process amount in our game on different things. And personally, if I should choose to use SDGFI or I should use more complex shader to make something more beautiful, I will choose the more complex shader over SDGFI. But I'm not saying what I'm saying is absolutely true. This is my personal idea. Also, maybe I don't know how to set the correct setting. And if you know more about these things, let me know in the comment section. Another thing that I want to note here is the new features available in Godot 4.2 which is absolutely crazy. Now, if you go in a rendering server, a new function is added, and that is texture RD create. This was not here in Godot 4.1. So what does this mean? It means you can create a texture in rendering device, which is much more low level, and pass that to the rendering server and use that in your material. So rendering device is much more low level, and it also is capable of running compute shader. I wish this feature was added earlier so I could use that to optimize my train, but now this feature is added. If I want to use this feature in mtrain plugin, this plugin will not work anymore with Godot 4.1. So you tell me your idea about that. I hope the Godot dev will apply the same concept thing for vertex and meshes. So we can create vertices in rendering device, and pass that to the rendering server. We will see about that. And at last, thanks to all of my Patreon. This Godot project is on my Patreon, so you can support me. Also, you can see the project file for this, but everything will remain free and open source. I also try to put video tutorial about how to make this train. And for each part, I need to create a separate tutorial. So have a good time. Until the next video, bye.